me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. mindful of us. Hallelujah. Most high of y'all, you alone are worthy all praise, glory, and honor, and I continue to keep saying that. We humbly ask that the eyes of our understanding will be open, that you'll speak to us these truths, they will sink deep down, we'll bring about a performance, and not only that, to manifest your power here on this earth. Satan don't want us to do it, but open up our understanding. We humbly ask in magnificent name, y'all sure? Hallelujah. You may be seated. <clears throat> Well, here we go again, huh? Don't ever know what's going to happen. <clears throat> you know, as a, as a pastor, I try my best. An Israelite, let's say an Israelite pastor, okay? I try my best to speak to us in ways that we can comprehend and understand because what's darkening us is this. Y'all hear me? Y'all want to just sit down and look? Or y'all, y'all settled in? What's darkening us is this. This. This right here is what keeps us from a lot of things. You follow me? Keeps us especially from us being able to see y'all at a greater level. Now, you can't say it's not being showed to us. You follow me? And it seems like Pastor Dow has it and continue to keep going along, but I don't want to go along without you coming along. You know the reason why? Because then you make my job easier. Does that make sense? See, the problem is this, from pastors all the way down, is that when we hear something, when we start to do something that's considered in faith, we hear something, and the first thing that happens to us is a, a thought would originate in our mind. Take us back to our former's previous religious experience. And rather than actually hearing what I'm saying, you go back on your religious spirits. The stuff that didn't profit you. You ain't never heard me talk, and then all of a sudden something will come up from that you may have heard in a church a long, long time ago, and, and it, it, it's there to throw you off. This stuff, as I keep telling you, it's ingrained in us. Are y'all hearing me? It's ingrained in us. Let me cut this way down here. Do y'all understand? This thing is, it, this, this religious spirit is rough. For us to get by. You're religious. It's just vain. Hmm? If I ask you the difference, I ain't going to ask you. I'm not even going to ask you. I don't want to get disappointed. Hmm? I'm, I'm here to be a helper of the faith, though. Huh? Don't the book says, have faith in y'all? Now, we all, believe it or not, we have faith in y'all. Yeah, we do. If we didn't have faith in y'all, we wouldn't be here on the Shabbat. You hear me? We got faith in y'all. The problem is not faith. The 
problem is believing. We all have faith, but we don't believe. You're going to say, yeah, I do. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because what drops you and, and, and what stops you from belief is your re previous religious experiences. No matter how much you try to teach us, you want to go back and, 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 and bank on that old dead Christian junk. It ain't never produced nothing. You know what I mean? If I start talking about the Holy Spirit, the first thing you do is start going back to what you learned in Christianity. And you try to bring that over. See, it's one thing to have faith in y'all, but it's another thing to believe. You hear that? Because the possibility comes in belief. You hear what I said? Yes, sir. And you can't teach people to believe. Uh-oh. You can have faith for salvation, but that faith is based on what somebody else has done. Belief is your offering back to Yah. Oh, boy. You ain't got none, man. We ain't got much of that working at all. We got plenty of faith. We can lay hands on the sick, but that don't mean they're going to be healed because our belief ain't connected with our I'm going somewhere else with the mind of Yah. Because you're too busy thinking your own thoughts, believing your own way. Yeah, you do. I can't remember. I said, I said it at one of the meetings. I think it was in uh, Jacksonville. Jacksonville this year. I said, I said, do you know there's very few of us that has ever really truly had an original thought? Did y'all hear that though? Yeah. I said there's very few of us that have ever truly had an original thought. Like right now I'm communicating, right? The spirit is communicating too. You follow me? And while there's communication going on, the Bible didn't say he to have an ear, let him hear what Pastor Val says. It says he to have an ear, let him hear what the spirit is. But see, before I already get the words out and then you immediately there's a spirit in there. It's trying to get you to associate with your previous religious experience, which ain't never did nothing for you. That's the stuff that we have to die out to. Because if you continue to keep drawing on things of ex or experiences that you had in life, then you're not being renewed. You're not being conformed. See, the ideal is to be conformed to his image. Not man's image, not my image, not your image, but his image. And in order to believe Yah, you've got to think like Yah. And we don't do that. Hmm? Remember the fig tree? Y'all sure curse the fig tree. Hmm? Then he immediately told the disciples after they came back through, he said, look, check out the fig tree. Y'all should have said, have faith in y'all. Did you hear that? Then, a little bit later on, he says, if you can believe. Uh-oh. Then look what he says. All things are to them that have faith or them that believe. See where the, see where, see where the connection is not being made? We equate faith to believing. And as long as we make the association faith and belief, belief will never be manifested. Because the saying written in the King James saying have faith in Yah is it really truly the proper translation is have the faith of Yah. That's proper translation. You get it? I mean, don't you consider that a big obstacle if somebody is born with one leg three inches shorter than the other? That's a mountain, isn't it? But you know what people do? If they was going to 
uh, try to, you know, pray as a petition, asking, right? There's a reason why I keep saying commanding. You hear that? Commanding, making petition, all right? See, and what we do is, is we'll get down there and we'll watch Pastor Dow and we'll watch the Spirit start moving, right? And what we're missing is the correlation between faith and belief. See, faith would have you still looking at the leg that is still short. You don't believe that the leg is going to grow. You believe Yah that grows the leg. Boy, see that, you see that big drop out, he couldn't even respond. That's how much the devil got our mind. Y'all hear me? I'm serious. That's how much the devil has got our mind. I told you, we're not lacking in faith, we're lacking in belief. 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 He that believe all things are possible to him that believes. Y'all don't have no doubt. He said, we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Is that right? Well, where does our strength come from then? Okay, and and how's that equated? We know it comes from y'all. I keep telling you, he don't think the way we think. And that's why we can't get to the proper belief. See, y'all's strength is made perfect when you're weak. Uh-oh. See, the problem is you're too strong. Right here. Bunch of conflict. Discord. Uh-huh. You're still depending on your ability. Yes, you do. Your intellectual ability. Y'all don't give a damn about your intellectual ability. See, it don't make sense, do it? That's why we get these drop-offs, though. We get these. Only thing, everything I'm telling you, I'm telling you things that I do when I'm doing stuff without communicating. Now, I realize, I perfectly realize that it's, your faith shouldn't stand or lie in man. It's just lie in Yah. Does that make sense? He knows that you have to have an example sitting in front of it before you would even begin to believe. Is this making sense? I'm telling you, the fine line is faith and belief. That's the fine. It, 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 it's so thin, yet we can't cross over. A religious spirit is keeping us from so much more on y'all, especially the perfecting process. So the real true definition of real true belief, if you want to make the, the connection, is you all, all of us have got to learn how to think like Yah does. Does it make sense? I mean, think about this. Watch this, watch this, watch this. He is able to do that which is exceedingly and abundantly above all. I'm trying to take this thing slow, man. All that you could ask, watch this, all that you could ask or think. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. See, you see the drop off? You see what I mean? It's a big drop off. Y'all don't see the disconnect. It does a big disconnect. I, let me try this again. I, I, I can't. I'm giving it to you, but I can't give it to you. Father, I'm humbly asking that you would open up the understanding of our minds. All right, please. I'll tell you what. Look, Ephesians 1.15 teach. Let's try this route. Faith come out here. Hear him come out of the word of God. We got plenty of that. Now we need a belief to connect with faith. We plowing. Y'all don't think it is, but we plowing. 
You know, farmers are out plowing. Just because you don't see them plowing don't mean they're not plowing. You can tell somebody's been plowing because if you go to the grocery store and pick up corn, that means somebody's been plowing. I never mind. Never mind. Well, I didn't see it. I didn't. Read. Read. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in Master Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the Elohim of our Master Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, Hold on. So what is that understanding? What is it? Stuff that you studied? Stuff that you have accepted? No. He says the eyes of your understanding. You ever hear us all the time pray that our understanding might be open? Do you remember when it says that, that, um, that Yahshua um, prayed for them that they might understand the scriptures? Hmm? You remember over in 2 Corinthians 4, it says that there's a God that is in this world. And, and what is he blind? Not your eyes, but your what? So what we're dealing with is darkness of minds. We're dealing with darkness of minds that has no association with the creator the way that it should be. Because we don't think like God. Read verse 16 again. Start there. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the Elohim of our Master Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. In the knowledge of who? Of him. Knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Isn't that something? The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That doesn't draw on previous knowledge. That's y'all's knowledge. Read on. That you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe. Oh, the exceedingly greatness of his power into usward that what? Believe. Didn't it start by faith earlier? Didn't it end on belief? Yes. So in between all that, it started at faith and got us to the belief. Yes. And what we miss is everything in between. What we miss was the mind of Yah. In between. Read it again. Start at verse 17. That the Elohim of our Master Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. In the knowledge of who? Of him. All right, let me stop there for a second. Try to slow it down a little more. Remember I first started off and said, the problem is you're too religious. All your religion has got you is a, is a bunch of emotion. It doesn't produce y'all. A bunch of feeling. It don't produce y'all. A bunch of begging. It don't produce y'all. You know what I mean? We're trying to get to this mind right here. This. We got to transform this because we keep going this way. We're going to get farther and farther because the world is getting worse. And you can, you, I know it's getting worse by watching you because it based on what you soak and immerse yourself in all week. You think his flesh trying to die? I, I guarantee you, it's get this daily meal every day. Don't it? Read. The eyes of your understanding. The eyes. Whoever thought that understanding had eyes? That makes no sense, does it? Read. 
The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Being what? Enlightened. Enlightened, opened up. Come on. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. You hear that? What is the hope of who's calling? His calling. But I've been called. Now wait a minute, slave. Just because you called, it don't give you a great position. The highest calling in the book is saint, right? The highest calling you can have as an office for y'all as an apostle, right? Isn't that right? Don't the Bible tell you desire spiritual gifts? How many people would love to be an apostle, man? Huh? Well, I promise you ain't nobody want to pick that up. Apostles of great men of Yah. Are they not? Extraordinary men of Yah. Isn't that right? Look what life got every one of them. So much for all the prophets now, isn't it? First apostles, second prophets. Isn't that right? Who wants to be a prophet now? See what I mean? You want to be these Christian prophets. P-R-O-F-I-T. Now people don't really truly don't want to be no man of y'all today. No, they don't. They think they do. Having a calling of y'all is not a position of great notoriety. Uh oh. Uh, this is rough. This is rough. I, I can't destroy the Gentile mind for you. We're going to go back. I'll tell you what, maybe we skip on. Go down to Ephesians 4. Start at verse 17. Maybe we go down and we come back to 1. Maybe we can, you know, we, we like this skipping around stuff. I learned at a very early age. Everybody, who used to read comic books? Raise your hand. Now, look at all these liars. Look at all these liars. The majority, when you first picked up a comic book, first thing you did was you start looking at the pictures. Flipping all the way through it. Now, how many people used to read comic books? See what I'm talking about, mind darkness? You really believe you was reading them. You may have read it later on. What's the first thing you do when you pick up a magazine? Go look at the pictures. There ain't too many people sit down and actually read a book. I probably have read, with all the books I have, I probably have read in 54 years of living, I may have read three books from cover to cover. And I got a big library of books. Kabir says to me, have you read all the Bible passages? I said, nope, never have. He said, I've read it seven times. And I said, ain't did a damn game for you, D, has it? I mean, should I be? Thank you. You are a seven-time graduate. <laughs> You think somebody reading the Bible seven times, man? Shoot. <laughs> Shoot. Maybe you can help me to walk on water. You ain't never read the whole Bible. Never. I'm sure that there are verses I have never visited. Look at them looking now. Then now, the next thing you know, well, how do you get all this believed in, Pastor Dow? Let's go to Ephesians 4. You may have to start. Go, go verse 17, teach. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Master. This is really rough. That you henceforth. Watch this. Walk not as other Gentiles. Not, not walk like what? Other Gentiles. See, walk. while you still here, Israelites got the gum on and stuff, you and mine is still Gentile. 
Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I see it all the time. I deal with it from pastors all the way down. Gentile, cardinal minds. Pastors, elders, deacons, teachers, preachers, uh, everybody who think that they everything, and I sit and watch them. And then, of course, they get mad at me because I'm telling them what your mind is functioning after. Whatever happened to humility? Somebody got to teach. See, it's easy for me to teach because I've been where you are, so therefore I have, a, I have a greater understanding of maybe how I can reach you. But the first thing I got to do is ask that the Most High will grant me utterance. So that your faith don't lie in man, but in Yah. Y'all confused? Y'all ain't all the confusion. I'm telling you, what's blocking us is this darkness right here. It controls every aspect of your life. You live like you, you believe like you, but you don't believe like y'all. Ain't we bond servants? Slaves? Yep. Am I making any sense or am I just a bit blowing hot air? Ain't it foolish to think that a man could stand up here and know more than you? Uh oh. And here it is again. Watch this. And y'all chose by the. Isn't that something? See that weak state? See that weak state? That low base state? Y'all get it? See what? Paul said, I've had to abase myself so that you could be exalted. Oh, boy. See, the Gentile mind equates that as arrogance, pride. Woo, this is rough. This is rough. What time is it? I'm getting a headache. This is really rough. Are y'all hearing me, though? Go back to Ephesians 4, 17 again. Listen. Listen. This I say therefore, and testify in the master, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. Y'all hear that? Yes. Don't walk like other Gentiles walk. Why? What do they do? Read. In the vanity of their mind. You're so puffed up. You're too puffed up. Vanity, you want to put another word for it, in, in, equated to the word emptiness of their mind. So you think, what is vanity in the world? Vain, isn't it? Isn't it vain? Somebody who has a high lofty position of themselves or thought of themselves? Vanity, vain, vanity. You know, vanity fair. <laughs> Jeez. You getting that? Vain, 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 vain. But in the scriptures, vanity is equated in context of this as emptiness. Why are they emptiness? Because their minds is alienated. Separate. See, when the Bible says, think on these things, you think on the things you've already done thought on. <sighs> this is rough. This is really rough. Read on. Having the understanding darkened. What is the Gentiles understanding? Darkened. Now think about this for a second. Here is Paul. Hebrew of the Hebrew. Israelite. Circumcised the eighth day. Tribe of Benjamin. He's up here in Ephesus. And he's talking to the people of faith. And he said, you see how these Gentiles walk and how they think and do things? Don't, don't you do that. But what have you learned all your life? And how much of that have you died out to? Oh, and I think that we have a mind of Christ. At least I, we should, I hope we should be. 
We should be. But it, we can't see too much manifestation of it. Uh-oh. Read. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated. Being what? Alienated. From what? From the life of Yah. Through the ignorance that is in them. But their ignorance, they think it's intelligent. Don't you think it's intelligent? Oh boy. See how this mind gets you in trouble? Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Who mind did he have? Who mind do you got? I, ain't not, I, I didn't say you wasn't the people of the faith. Faith is enough to get you saved, to get your salvation. It just ain't enough to make you real true ambassadors of Yahweh. See, if we, make, if we can really truly get this, the works that y'all sure did, we can do. Too distracted. Here. Your thoughts, your thought pattern, the way you think. I mean, imagine if you was, just, just pretend you was passing out for a second. And I watch you parade up in me and you talking to me and sashaying and carrying on and, and you have no idea what my thoughts are. Matter of fact, you don't even care what my thoughts are. You're too busy communicating your thoughts. You're not even thinking, I wonder how stupid I look in front of him. I wonder what's going on in his mind because he ain't saying much. Anybody ever talk to me and I listen to you and I don't even reply back and I just go on? Anybody ever had that experience with me before? Raise your hand if you had experience with me before. Wow. Don't you think you deserve an answer? Sometimes I'll be sitting up here watching this movie show. I'll be. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> because if I try to reach you, I wouldn't be able to reach you anyway. Because you're too, too busy trying to communicate to me who you think don't understand where you're coming from. And all I'm seeing exuberant is pride. Let me talk. Hear me. If you, if you'll just let me talk to you, then I guarantee you will see things my way. Then you'll see how clear the picture is. Yeah. Isn't it true? Ain't that the reason why you want to explain yourself? What you really truly want to do, you want to explain the darkness of your mind. You have not yet come to the revelation of Christ. Not in this matter. And you'll think that since, you know, people don't really understand how your mind functions, if they did understand how your mind functions, then you'll be justified in the way that your actions have been expressed. Isn't that true? If you just hear me, you, I, I could persuade you to change your mind. You know, if I hear you, I'm going to go mad. Whoever had that experience before, you heard, you, 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 Pastor, can I talk to you? Go ahead, talk, okay? Good. Whoever had that experience with me before? Am I being rude? Nope. Suppose Eve did that when Satan starts spitting in her ear. Uh. Mm. We'd be in a whole lot better condition, wouldn't we? Read. Because of the blindness of their heart. The blindness of their what? Their heart. What? Ain't blindness always associated with eyes? Hold that 
Bible say? Go to 2 Corinthians 4 4. I believe me, I didn't plan this. Y'all started this just by sitting there looking. <laughs> oh, mercy. Don't y'all understand that being in this ministry right here is making y'all some of the most intelligent saints that has ever lived on the face of planet Earth? Don't y'all get that? And, and you ain't even got to go in debt and pay student loans. Hmm? Y'all see the way I handle that theologian up in Green Bay? I did that with three quarters of my brain tied behind my back. See what his letters got him? Tell me that man ain't totally alienated from y'all. He couldn't even hear y'all. No. What does he hear? See, are y'all, is this starting to make sense? Yes, sir. We always get it when I talk about somebody else. It's easier. Oh, oh light bulb, there it is right there. That's what I be doing? Yes, that's what you be doing. But you look at him, you listen to him, you go, this rhetoric, there's no way he could believe that stuff. But then how would you know what Paul was expressing over here in Ephesians 4 when these people definitely have their mind darkened? They, they are definitely Gentile in mindset. The way he, that mind has been sharpened by the universities. The, the theological schools. The cemeteries. And as foolish as I look and how foolish as I speak, Y'all don't hear my broken English? I am not, there's no way in hell I could be an English teacher. You know it's y'all's foolishness. Where did he come up with that stuff? How does he put that together? See, you done got to the point of even making sense to you now. <laughs> and the way you do, you just by saying, oh, pastor, just in the spirit. Yeah, better than flesh. 2 Corinthians 4 4. In whom the God of this world. What'd he do? Hath blinded the minds of the. So, so wait a minute. This world has a God. And you think, wait a minute. The people out there already have blind hearts, darkened hearts and minds. Why is Paul writing to the assembly of Corinth? And telling them about the God of this world that blinds minds, we, he can't be talking to us. We did assembly. You mean there could be just a slight chance that the enemy could blind your mind? Because he ain't going up there to visit the Gentiles. He's going to visit people. Let me tell y'all how y'all does this. It, it, this is how y'all does, okay? Yahshua would send apostles, disciples, taught ones out before his face. Then when he would come in, the people would be prepared to hear him. The only time they wasn't sent out is when he performed a miracle, he told the people, don't tell nobody, then they're going to run and tell everybody. You know Why? Because he wasn't trying to draw attention to himself. Unlike you, you want to be seen. Boy, don't let you perform one miracle. The whole world got to know it. You got to have your moment of glory. Y'all remember during Gathering of the Saints when that little girl came here with that shoe? That big old stack, Frankenstein looking shoe? She had a big old shoe. I actually tried to um, pray for her discreetly so that nobody knew what I was doing. Anybody remember that? I just kind of like took over to the corner right here and just kind of let everybody, I thought that, you know, they busy. I, ain't, I didn't have eyes in the back of my head. I didn't know everybody was gathering around. Didn't take long for her mama to try to steal that from her either and she didn't even mean it. 
double-minded person is unstable in how many ways? He that doubted his damned already. You see what I mean? The, a notable miracle, a notable deed has already been done, and you're sitting here watching your daughter walk. Without a big old limb, she's walking normal. And you say, are you all right? Are you all right? Would you please get away from her for a little bit? No, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but you need to just move out of the way. She finally said, Mama, fine, leave me alone. Walked down there and knocked on the door and asked Mother Carol, you got any shoes I can wear? Well, I, ain't got, I can't wear these other shoes no more. Mind you, I'm going to say it again. I wasn't trying to be seen. I was trying to do this over in the corner. You get that? Uh-oh. Don't y'all know the thought and the intent of a man's heart? He know when you're trying to play humble, but you lift it up on the inside. He knows. I know too. He knows. If you're going to perform miracles, if you're going to do signs and wonders, it's obvious you're going to be seen. But the whole idea is, is that the people really truly need to know where this power comes from. Without him, you can do. It has to come from him, and the people need to know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. He's working with you, but you don't need to be in front of him when all, all the glory go to him. Oh, boy. Don't worry about it. People are going to thank you for what you're doing and stuff, but you ain't got to sit there and look for it. Prime the pump. Look at me. Look at me. Did you see? Nah, I see nothing. And whom the God of this world have blinded the minds read? Of them which believe not. There's that word again. Them which believe not. So is he writing this letter to the world? Is he writing it to the assembly? So he's blinding the mind of them which believe not. I didn't say that you didn't have faith. I'm saying you have a problem with belief. Get this out of your mind that when Paul is talking to us through his letters that he's talking to those Gentiles out there. He just got finished telling you, I ain't talking to them folks out there. I'm telling you how not to be like them. Putting a difference. I know what it says before that if our gospel be hid, it is hidden to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world have blinded the mind. I know exactly what it says. Blinded the mind. Blinded the mind. The gospel is the message. See, a lot of people have heard of him, but they don't know him. I know a lot of people sitting in churches every week because they heard of him. I know a lot of people sitting in churches every week because their parents are sitting in churches. Yeah, a lot of people sitting in churches because grandmama, granddaddy, it it was just a thing to do. Make it sense? The minds, 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 the minds. We have no problem with faith. We have a problem with making a connection. That's the problem. That's why you keep making the same mistakes too again and again because we're not functioning after the mind of Christ. That's why homes are dysfunctional because we're not functioning after the mind of Christ. After the mind of Messiah. Uh uh-uh, That's why so much discord because we're not functioning after the mind of Messiah. Uh-oh. Hmm? Go back to Ephesians and finish up there. I'm going to... Whole, almost a whole hour. May be a while. Hmm? You tall, man. You know that. Man, it's wet over here. How does it get wet, man? I don't get that. All right, finish. 
who being past feeling, who being past feeling, watch this, listen close, closely, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. Y'all hear that? You heard it, but you don't understand it. That's why I'm here for. I'm here to feed you with knowledge and understanding. The past feeling is past the feeling of Yah. How Yah thinks, how Yah feels, how he equates things, how he associates things. Who being past feeling, read it again. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. That's when you start on your little lustful escapades. Does y'all have uncontrollable lust? Does y'all have addiction problems? So if we're going to be like y'all, we got to think like y'all, see like y'all, feel like y'all, act like y'all, live like y'all. If we don't, we're going to go over to the strength of the flesh and end up in unbridled lust. That's what lasciviousness is. We'll keep on wetting on ourselves and messing on ourselves. Read. To work all uncleanness. Now, we're supposed to be having the mind of y'all, right? See, when your mind is communicating, it's trying to get to your flesh to act out what is already in here. A lot of these feelings that you have. Have you ever even checked to see if they're really of y'all or not? Or do they fall in the category of lasciviousness? Isn't self-control one of the fruit of the Spirit? Oh. Oh. So we got to really work on this bridge and the gap of faith and belief then, don't we? Think on these things. Whatsoever is then ask yourself how much time in a day do you actually spend thinking on those things? Or do you think on the things that are already submitted to your mind where you don't even know where the communication originated from? That's giving something too much attention. Are y'all listening? That's giving something a hell of a lot more attention than what's deserved. I don't expect the goyims out there in the world to understand the thing that I'm saying. I expect for you to at least get a little bit of it. We can increase faith all day long. We can't increase belief though. You yourself are responsible for making sure that your mind is the mind of Yah. So if you can believe, you can say to this mountain, be thou moving, cast over yonder. And whatsoever you ask, whatsoever you say, that you will have. That's a spiritual law. Y'all can't lie. So to believe is, is, you know what? Yeah, I believe truly y'all can do this. Think about this statement. Is that real belief? Y'all can do this. How about y'all will do this? Simply because I ask. If you ask anything according to his 
Is it God's will to heal? Oh, never mind. See what I'm saying? No, I'm not playing mental gymnastics. The devil may ever think I'm doing that because I got him confused. I'm trying to show you what's really going to bring about the work. Well, we're, we're, we're going to visit this again in this message. It'll come up somehow, okay? Thorns in the flesh. Thorns in the flesh. As soon as you hear this, what's the first thing you think about? Paul's what? Thorn in his flesh. And what do you think Paul's thorn in his flesh was? Huh? Let's go to scripture. 2 Corinthians 2, 12, 1. To boast indeed is useless for me. You hear that? For I shall go on to visions and revelations of Yahweh. I know a man in Messiah who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or whether out of the body, I do not know. In other words, Paul couldn't even tell the difference from his body and his spiritual state. Elohim, no such a one, was caught up into the what heaven? Third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. Elohim knows that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not right for a man to speak. Of such a one, I shall boast. But of myself, I shall not boast. Y'all hear this? For if I wish, for if I shall wish to boast, I shall not be a fool. For I shall speak the truth, but I refrain lest anyone should think more of me than what he sees in me. Now this is a statement coming from a, a very powerful man. He didn't want no focus, no attention, no nothing on him. His flesh wanted to boast, but his spirit man did. He wanted the glory in the spirit man. Or oh, here's a me. And to keep me from exalting myself. You mean he was challenged in the flesh with being exalted? Everybody is. Most of us don't even know when we're being challenged though. And to keep me from exalting myself because of the exceedingly greatness of revelations. I mean, you get all this revelation that Paul got, man. Good God of mercy, man. <laughs> Boy, well, they're not, hey, hmm. Nobody got a mind like me, boy. A thorn in the flesh was given to me. A messenger of Satan to hit me. To keep me from exalting myself. No, 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 no. no. And, and, and to do what? And to keep me from exalting myself. And to keep me from exalting myself. Because of the exceeding greatness of revelations. A thorn. In the flesh was given to me. Thorn. That's natural. A messenger of Satan to hit me. Hit me. To keep me from exalting myself. Look, many times events and things happen in your life to keep you humble. And from exalting yourself. 
Sometimes we fight against it. Sometimes we fight against the purge. But more importantly, Satan uses people to be your thorns in the flesh. Who you thought the messenger of Satan was? Satan himself? Uh oh. Yeah, people. Look to your right. Thorn in the flesh. Look to your left. Definitely a thorn in your flesh. See what a messenger of Satan is? Uh oh. Oh, I thought it was some angelic host who you think is delivering you the message. How do they manifest themselves in this realm unless they use your voice? Oh, I know you saved, sanctified, Holy Spirit filled, by fire baptized, got Jesus on your side. You run out of your life and, 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 and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This your heritage. Ain't that right? You so damn religious. But Peter could have a revelation that Messiah was the Messiah revealed to him straight from Yah and then the same Messiah could turn around and rebuke him say to Satan get behind me but, but that ain't you. He could have a revelation and then get rebuked for saying, Satan speaking through him. And, 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 and rebuke Satan right through the same vessel that had the revelation. But it ain't you. See how religious you are? You're untouchable, ain't you? And the reason why you, you're so untouchable, you get touched and buffeted all the time. You get hit all the time. Because you have this opinion of yourself. That when Satan is speaking through you, a messenger of Satan, you don't even know. You're too busy defending him, justifying him. Yet there's discord and dissension and bitterness and unforgiveness, hatred and resentment and everything is all in the air. And you even feel the hand of Satan on you, but not you. Uh oh. Concerning this, I pleaded with the master three times to take it away from me. Isn't that the best way to go? Hey, I discern, I recognize, I got a message of Satan that's sitting there. You know what? I want this thing taken away from me. Get it out of me. How many times he asked? See, so Paul knew. If he didn't get hurt the first time, he's going to keep on asking. Well, another outlook. Until we all learn how to take pleasure in certain things in our lives. I said another outlook until we learn how to take pleasure in certain things. You take pleasure in the wrong things because your mind don't think like y'all. No, let, me, let me try something here for a second. Let me see. It pleased y'all to bruise him. What? Pleased? But not you. You mean every single time that they spit on Messiah, they plucked his beard, whipped him, every, 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 every hit, every insult was bringing more pleasure to Yah. 
You know the reason why? Because in that flesh, he was condemning sin in the flesh. And it brought pleasure to y'all. But you too busy defending. Y'all hear this? He said to me, my favor is sufficient for you. My grace is. Is that right? For my power is, is perfected in what? But you want to be strong. You want to stand toe to toe. You got words. You always got something to say. But he said, the key word right here, he said, he said, uh, <clears throat> my power is perfected in weakness. My power is perfected when I was beaten thrice, shipwrecked and destitute in fastings offering and hunger and offering. My power is perfected in infirmities. Because they're teaching me something. Uh oh. Hmm. Most gladly, then I would, I shall rather boast in my. You got a resume? I'll tell you what, man. One time the Jews beat the shit out of me. Left me for dead. What'd they do that for? So that the message could be exalted? Can't nobody but a messenger of Satan do something like that. Uh-oh. So that the power of Messiah rests in me. See, if you want more of Jesus' power to manifest in your life, you got to learn how to become weak so that you can be strong. <clears throat> Most people don't know how to think when I just sit and listen to them and don't really say nothing. Ain't you got something to say? Nope. Why? I'm watching this manifestation in front of me. If I try to tell you, all you're going to do is attack me. So why should I waste my breath? I'll wait till you come to an abundance of revelations. In other words, that very thing that's a thorn, it's going to whoop your ass. I promise it's going to get you. At the most inopportune time, too. He said to me, look at this. Then I shall rather boast in my Weaknesses, so that the power, there's that power again of Messiah, do what? Rest on me. You know, yep, my little, my little son just had, right? You can tell he's in a very weak state. I say it all the time in the summer. I said, you see how dependent they are? I said, they can't do nothing for themselves. They're not like the animal kingdom. You see a cow that bursts, bam, it's up running around. It can feed itself with his mom, and he can't do nothing. 100% totally dependent. Hmm? The goats. You see the goats? You ever see the goats bird? They, they kid. Next thing you know, they running around, boy, and they just bam, all over, play, chasing each other. Deer, as soon as they come out, man, get up, wobble a little bit, and wham, off and running, they go. They can feed themselves. So his kai in his weak state is totally dependent upon the power of his authority. That's the way we should be. <laughs> with 
the Most High. Realize without him you can't do nothing. Instead of it just, you know, instead of it just being a religious cliche, something you say, let it become a real belief system. Oh. Uh oh. See, we have too much fight. Too much justification of ourselves. Don't get mad. Don't get me wrong either. There's a balance in this. And there's a time for everything under the sun. Emphasis again. So that the power of Messiah rests in me. Therefore I take pleasure in my weaknesses which are what? Infirmities. In my insults which are my reproaches. Don't you justify and defend, defend all these? In my needs or necessities, I take pleasure in, in infirmities. I take pleasure in insults. I take pleasure in reproaches. I take pleasure in necessities. I take pleasure in persecutions. I take pleasure in distresses for the sake of Messiah. For when I am weak, then I am Then we wonder why come we don't see much power. Y'all manifest it because you're too haughty. You don't have the humility. You know, people would equate me because, see, people don't, you know me. They don't know me when I'm not up preaching. You, you know me. I mean, for those of you, no games. For those of you that know me, who, know, who knows me as a humble man? Wow. Isn't that something? Would y'all say I'm a meek man? But when I'm up here preaching, you can't see none of that. You don't ever see my enemies come out? They bark, boy. Don't them barking dogs bark? Warning. Because they don't know me. <laughs> You get it? Listen. Who are the ones that bring about infirmities, insults, persecutions, and discretions in your life? People do. That's why I had you look to your left and right. So that you know you're not exempt. See, if nobody's to your left, somebody's to your right. Nobody's to your right, somebody's to your left. And nobody to your left and right, they're in the front or real of you. See, Satan uses people as his messengers to buffet you. Satan uses those who are submitted to him at his will to do evil to you. Can he use Israelites? No. Oh, but he can't use you though. I don't know how this slide got in there. We won't forget that one. Hey, we went to 2 Corinthians 4 already, right? We won't skip that one. Y'all write that down. 2 Corinthians 4 verses 1 through 12, okay? So listen to me today. So that you can learn the battle. Learn the war and the art of it. Y'all hear me? You see, sometimes we forget the things that we have done to others in our lives. Don't we do that? Watch this. Can I throw, a, can I throw a, a, a spin and a twist, but it's really not a spin and a twist? How many believe that when you got converted, you accept the Messiah, that your sins are, are separated to you as far from the east to the west? How many people believe that? How many believe they're thrown into the depths of the sea, never to be retreated again? How many people believe that? Everybody believe that? Everybody believe that. That's good. I'm glad you believe that because I believe that too. I do believe that. Hmm? I also believe something else too that you don't believe. I mean, come on. Your sins, iniquities, transgressions, they all gone, right? Washed by the blood. Sure they are. That's what the book says, don't it? 
But it also says something else too. We're going to get to this. The law. You got to go back to the law for understanding. You got to go to the law. Check this out. It's Shemot 34 verse 6. We're going to take our time getting there, okay? But we're going to get there. And Yahweh passed before him and proclaimed Yahweh. Yahweh and El, compassionate and showing favor, patience, and great in loving commitment and truth. Is that right? Is that right? Is that right? Hallelujah. Look, watching over loving commitment for thousands, forgiving crookedness and transgression and sin, but... But, but, by no means leaving unpunished. See, he, he forgave, he did separate them. Huh? We're going to get there too, a little bit later too, okay? Remember Paul? Where you going, Paul? I'm on the road to the mask. Where you going? We're going to go get them damn Israelites. You know the last thing was said to him? <clears throat> After their experience? He ended up over at Ananias' house. Ananias talking to Yahshua. Don't you know <laughs> who this cat is right here? Yeah, yeah, but I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you how great things he's going to suffer for my name's sake. Because remember, I asked him earlier, Saul, so, why are you persecuting me? Who are you? I'm y'all sure who you are persecuting. Well, I ain't persecuting. You touching my people? You touch them, you touch the apple of my eye. After being, having a revelation of y'all sure, hearing his voice, you mean to tell me the rest of his life was spent On suffering? Oh, but see, the Christianity mindset got you thinking you're supposed to have no calamity. You done done a lot of shit in your life. What you better start doing is thanking y'all for the purging process. You done sold a lot of destruction in hell. See, I, that's why I keep telling y'all, I said it earlier, you keep thinking like this world, you're going to be in opposition against y'all. You've got a way that you think this thing is laid out and it ain't the way y'all think. And the whole purpose of this is so that the fear of y'all don't depart from you. You may have did that and you're still going to pay for it. Every sin, every transgression will receive a just recompense of reward. One scripture does not cancel out or negate another. It's supposed to be there to teach you so you have the humility and the respect and the honor to not go out and transgress against him again. Because if you do, he gonna whoop your ass. What father is he that doesn't chasten his son? How do we forget all these principles? But, 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 up, but, 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 but. Visiting the crookedness of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation. The children's to the third and fourth generation. Keeping mercy thousands, for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and that will by no means clear the guilt. Didn't he just got finished saying he did wipe all that out? But you still got to pay for this. 
That's why I keep trying to tell y'all over and over again, you can't continue to keep doing this damn wickedness and think you ain't going to let go and be no payment. All this discord, all this strife, all this unforgiveness, all this bitterness, all this resentment, all this hatred, all these personal issues, you're going to pay for that. Every bit of it. Not one jot or one tittle will in no wise fail from the law until it all be fulfilled. Think like y'all. A loving y'all, kind y'all, trying to show you that he mean business too. Oh, the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, to the third and fourth generation. Now listen, while we may be forgiven, there always remains a payment for the things that we've done. Why would he say to Paul, or why would he say to Ananias, I'm going to show him how great things he's going to suffer. Why? Because he caused a lot of suffering amongst my people. But Paul is a dynamite, dynamo. Lay hands on the sick, pray for people to receive the Holy Spirit. Man! Got bit by an atlas, shook it up in a fire, and I'm going to show him how great things he's going to suffer for my name's sake. See, Paul figured this out. I get it. Every time I have a test, a trial, it is a test to test to see if I have the mind of Yah. You can try and hide bitterness in your heart. Offenses, hatred, withholding good. You can try, you don't even have to communicate and just try to hide it. Let me give you another example. That's, that's that, what we just got finished going over. Acts chapter 9, verse 1 through 7 was the Paul experience. He was on that Damascus road. Road to Damascus. Got knocked off the horse. Everybody around him heard the voice, but they didn't see nobody. Got blinded. Did he not? He got blinded on that road. He ended up in front of Ananias. Ananias was terrified of this man. Because he had letters given to him by the council at Jerusalem to bring any that was up this way. Yahshua told Ananias, don't worry about this. This man is a chosen vessel unto me. Let me get, can I help y'all a bit? Many are called, but few are chosen. <laughs> then he turned around and said, and, 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 and I have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of Yah might be manifested. I'm talking about you, chosen of Yah. See, you've been called, but look, y'all chose you out to bring you up further. Y'all don't see how this ain't no play thing? You think you're here by your will and your ability to make choices and decisions saying yes or no. No, this is y'all's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. There's a song that said, as where he leads me, I will follow. You don't even know where he leads you. The road is narrow and the way is rough. Why? Because the way of the transgressor is So he has to get you purged before you get to the kingdom. So every time you fail an experience, you don't get it, don't worry about it. He got another messenger of Satan tailor-made and cooking up another experience for you until you pass the test. And you know what? 
He's taking pleasure in it too. He watching you and going, <laughs> look at him. You know, they throw me out by the seat of my pants in Christian on his message. But Yahshua said to him, go thy way, for he's the chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. See, wickedness in high places, wickedness, thoughts in your mind. You think, you're thinking on them. But do you remember when I said, none of us have never had an original thought? Let's go here to Baddish Sheet chapter 3. Verse 17. And to the man he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, do not eat of it, cursed is the ground because of you. In toil, you are to eat of it all the days of your life. And the ground shall bring forth thorns and thistles for you, to you. And you shall eat the plants of the field. What comes out of the ground besides food? Man and woman. Thorns. Or pass down a high in the world, you're going to equate and associate men and women with thorns. Man comes from the ground. A messenger of Satan is a thorn. A thorn given to you. Israel, you got to see this. Well, Pastor, you 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 trying to interject influence into what you're saying. It says thorns are messenger of Satan. Well, let's go find out what the messenger of Satan is then, okay? Because y'all are saying, because of your disobedience, thorns are given to you and for you. So we're going back to the law again. Is that right? To the law and to the testimony. Numbers 33, 15. And Yahweh spake unto Moses in the day, in the plains of Moab by Jordan and Jericho, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say unto them, When you have passed over the Jordan into the land of Canaan or Canaan, when you cross over what? The Jordan? Going into the land of Canaan? Is that right? Look what he says. You shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land. From before you, and you and shall destroy all their graven stones, and shall destroy all their molten images, and lay waste all their high places, and you shall possess the land and dwell in it, for I have given you the land to possess, and you shall divide the land by lot as an inheritance among your clans to your the larger, and you give a large inheritance inheritance and to the smaller to you. Give a smaller inheritance whenever the lot falls to anyone that is his. You inherit according to the tribes of your fathers. And if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall be that those whom you let remain See the reason why we have to put people out of the ministry? It shall be those who you let remain shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides. See, the ones that God told you better purge out from among you and get rid of so you can clean the land when you get there. Remember I talked about how a lot of us come in here with our idle opinion? See, you got that natural. Now we got to get up to the spiritual now. You know, because we can justify ourselves and say, well, that ain't us naturally, but what about the spiritual side of it, though? He said, if you don't 
Do what I tell you about the inhabitants of this land, Moses. These people are going to be like thorns in your sides. And they shall trouble you in the land where you dwell. That's the law. And it shall be that I do to you as I thought to do to them. See, so if you lead them around and you think y'all going to get them, he going to get you for not obeying him because he told you to get rid of it. Then he tells you to purge out the evil from among you. He tells you to get rid of your evil ways and your evil's doing. And whatever you thought that everybody else was so evil in and stuff, guess what? Now y'all's getting you. Uh-oh. Do you see why when y'all gives us land, he's very serious about us removing the heathens and purging the land? You see, some of you still have a heathen mindset. You do not really care about our laws and our righteous ways. You're trying to look like our culture, but your mind, you remain, but in your mind, you remain unconverted. You don't love our culture. You don't love our ways. You love your opinion. You love your haughty, heady, high self. You have no humility in you whatsoever at all. You won't die out to your flesh because your flesh is ruling. You don't submit. You don't obey. You submit when it's convenient to your flesh. You obey when it's convenient to your flesh. But you're really a ruthless, rebellious dog. So with some of you, we have to get rid of you because the law as well as the New Testament tells us so. 2 Corinthians 6.14 says, Do not become unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness with lawlessness? And what fellowship have light with darkness? And what agreement have Messiah with Belial? Or what part does a believer have with an unbeliever? And what union has the dwelling place of Elohim with idols? For you are a dwelling place of the living Elohim. As Elohim has said, I shall dwell in them and walk in them. And I shall be their Elohim and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, save y'all, and do not touch what is unclean. And I shall receive you. And I shall be a father to you. You shall be my sons and daughters to me, saith Yahweh, the Almighty. Don't tell me he's done changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Joshua had some issues himself over there. Joshua 23, 10. One man of you put a thousand to flight for Yahweh. Your Elohim is he who is fighting for you as he has promised you. And you shall diligently guard yourselves to love Yahweh your Elohim. You should diligently guard yourself to do what? To love Yahweh your Elohim? But if you turn back at all and cling to the remnant of these nations. Now let's stop for a second. You see, this stuff is ungraduated. Not only have we cling to the nations, we've been in captivity to the nations. We've learned the ways of the heathen. We have the mind of the heathen, the very thoughts of the heathen. Our whole composition is make and makeup is heathenistic. See, physically, naturally, Old Testament, renewed covenant, New Testament. We got all this Persian doing this temple in this land right here. Right here. Right here. Should be a godly antipathy against this wickedness that dwells in this vessel. Should be a hatred of detestable thing, everything that is evil. Huh? But instead, we justify and defend our carnality. Don't we do it? We got things we have learned from the nations that we come from that we, even after conversion, we're still clinging to. We cling to our way of thinking. We cling to our self-justification. 
We pride ourselves in, in how right we are. We don't change nothing. We don't die out to anything. We run from persecution. We run from insults. We insulate ourselves and pretend as if we're suffering for y'all, but the really truly is we're suffering because we can't do our way. That these remain among you and intermarry with them and go into them and they to you know of a certain that Yahweh your Elohim shall no longer drive these nations out from before you and they shall be snares and traps to you and a whip on your sides and thorns in your eyes until you perish from this good land which Yahweh your Elohim has given you. See, Paul, he wanted the message taken away from him, but Yah said, no, you're going to take it away from me. Wow. Wow. We missed that one. Didn't y'all get a direction on two occasions right here that we have the physical and the spiritual responsibility to remove all this mess out of us, our own selves? We know that we're on the other side of captivity right now. And so when Paul, Paul was asking that all these religious scribes and Pharisees that kept sending out um, contingencies after him to persecute him, he's like, man, God, Every time I turn around, I'm getting persecuted. Every single time. I have nothing but destitution. I'm destitute. Don't worry about my favor sufficient for you. Yep, my strength is made perfect in the weaker you get, the stronger you get. But you get stronger in me and not in you. I'm taking away your ability to resist, boy. I'm breaking the pride. They say iron can't be bent, but I'm doing a damn good job at bending his wheel. Uh-oh. He gave the Israelites a responsibility to naturally get rid of these people, and he told them if you don't get rid of them, guess what? They're going to be thorns in your side. They're going to continue to keep causing you problems. Go to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 13. Reteach. These all died in faith. They all died in faith doing what? Not having received the promises. See that? They are, all the people died in faith and they didn't even receive no promises. But come on. But having seen them afar off. They seen them how? Afar off. Can't y'all see the kingdom afar off? How many people have died in Yahshua when he told him if you believe in me you shall never taste death and yet people are still dead just to live by yet I see the kingdom will fall off if Jesus don't come back before my time is up I still see the kingdom his kingdom is still coming I think what we do is we get so focused on the here and now that we forget about the emphasis we should be added, should be added and the focus we should be have in purging ourselves. We need to have the discernment to know when we have a message of Satan buffeting us because of our faults. Instead of every single time there's an insult we defend ourselves. Every single time there's an infirmity, it's always because of somebody else. Yet, it still keeps coming to your front door. Yeah, the messenger of Satan, he's persistent, isn't he? He keeps coming and coming and coming, and you still ain't learned yet. Don't worry about it. He says, I'll be back again. 
Why? All this working out for your perfection. But dang, I don't know about this kind of perfection. Now, that's because you're too prideful. You don't understand you got to get weak though. So that the power of Yah may be manifested in you. Read. And were persuaded of them. What would you persuade it? And embraced them. And confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Come on. For they that say such things declare plainly. What do they declare? That they seek a country. And truly. Mm. If they had been mindful of that country. And that, that's the key. If they had been mindful of that country. Come on. From whence they came out. Come on. They might have had opportunity to have returned. Look at that. Why is it that every time we go through something and we feel like we're being so unjustly done wrong, so the first thing that we hear in our minds is a suggestion to go back where we come from? As if that's going to make us better. Instead of putting our hand to the plow and continue on moving forward and stuff, huh? and we sit there and entertain these thoughts too. Did, 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 did I make a mistake? Double mind, personal statement, all things. He that doubt is damned. Oh, what happened to where he lead me, I'll follow. Oh, oh, oh. What happened to nothing between my soul and my Savior? Uh, uh, what happened to all these great sayings? Why is it that when the test and the trial and the tribulation is upon us and stuff, instead of being strong to go through it, so his strength can be made perfect in weakness, why are we still trying to remind, remain alive and keep that physical fleshly, cardinal strength. Why? So we can live and manifest it another day? No wonder y'all ain't using too many of us. Too strong. You're too heady, too high-minded, too strong. No wonder you can't make this correlation between this fine, thin hairline of faith and belief. You still are too much alive. Your fleshly man is still ruling too damn much. And you don't have a mind of Christ like you should have. Read. But now, they desire a better country that is unheavenly. Don't you desire a better country? Let me ask you all a question. How and what type of focus would we have if we kept our eyes and our minds fixed on the kingdom? We could still be on the earth but be kingdom minded, couldn't we? Anybody ever been up in an airplane before? Boy, this earth looks real small to how you get up, don't it? And guess what? All the worries, all the cares, all the turmoil and everything else is down there in the earth. It ain't up there in that plane. It ain't up there in that plane. Where did it go? <laughs> or where did you go? <laughs> mm. Mm -mm. Are y'all hearing any of this at all? You finished? Read on. Wherefore Yah is not ashamed to be called their Elohim. You hear that? He's not ashamed to be called your Elohim when you go through trials and tribulations and persecutions and insults and infirmities. You know, things is going to purge you. Come on. For he hath prepared for them a city. All those who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So why are you busy insulating yourself from persecution? Protecting yourself. Self-justification. Again, I'll say it again. To everything under the sun, there's a time. You have to know when Satan is at your door. Because he, man, that's an intelligent being. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and against powers. But every time you turn around, what are we wrestling against? 
God. In your flesh, messengers of Satan sent to buffet you. Sometimes these stones are going to stay there because we refuse to meet the conditions of Yah. Mm. If a brother offend you, go to him and him alone. Tell him his fault. Tell him his fault. If he don't hear you, then take another witness. If he don't hear thee, you know, two or three witnesses, then bring it before the assembly. Oh, we can't do that. We want to go and make sure we keep our flesh alive. So let me go talk to somebody else. They ain't got nothing to do with it. Let me get some allies. Let me, let me, let me get somebody to ally with me to help me to defeat this person over here. You mean, what you're basically saying is let me get somebody who has the message of Satan in them just like I do. So I can put more spiritual persecution and more of that heaviness upon the one that I'm trying to impact. Hmm? Ever done that before? Go seeking allies because your feelings are hurt? And you probably are the very messenger of Satan that's used for somebody else's perfection. Finish. The people who receive the promise of God are the faithful few who love Him and obey Him. Judges two one. We still in the, we're in the law now. Is that all right? And an angel of Yahweh came up from Gilgal to Boykin and said, "I made you to go up out of Mizraim, and you have bought and have bought you." unto the land which I swear unto your fathers and I said I will never break my covenant with you. I won't do it. So let me see. We got to drive out all that will not embrace this righteous covenant. Is that right? And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. And ye shall throw down their altars but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why? Have you done this? Most high. What he says, right? See, we got to deal with these people. You cannot give place to the devil. See, over there, they physically was dealing with something. But so, when, when the most high was dealing with Paul and his thorns and the flesh and stuff, if we go back to the law, we can see exactly what the most high has set up for Paul. All these thorns were all these persecutions that he was receiving. And they were all coming by way of man. That's why he says, I get it now. I take pleasure in my infirmities. He even wrote a statement saying, you know what? I hate the garment that is spotted by the flesh. Simply amazing, isn't it? I know the reason why they're all here. I know what Yahshua said. When that Roman was speaking to him, don't you know I have power to say whether you live or die? He said, you ain't got no power unless the Father give it to you. You can't do nothing to me. (laughs) You know how much of a maniac (laughs) that guy thought Jesus was when he said that? Man, I will kill you. No, you can't kill me unless. There's a bridge too far in. Wherefore I said, I will drive, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your side. And their God shall be a snare unto you. 
Let me just say it modern day, we can all, let me dumb this down a little bit. Can't y'all tell when somebody get on your damn nerves? Thorns. What about when you get on somebody's nerve? You ain't a thorn then, are you? Huh? You, a, you a lime on the thorn tree. <laughs> Leaders, if you do not deal with the people of the Most High, the Most High will deal with you. You will receive grace when you are obedient to Yahweh. All these instructions are so that you will learn so that you will not have to deal with bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, hatred, because you got to get, you got to know how to equate this from natural to spiritual. Not only is this talking about natural, but it's also spiritual as well. You see, devils will use people, but they will also use you. The prophet also said, the day will come when Yah will break the yoke of people off of you and your prayer will be answered, but you must deal justly. You hear that? Let's listen to the prophet Nahum. Come on with it, teach. Prophet Nahum. Is everybody all right? Did we lose y'all? Isn't this a good man? Isn't this a beautiful message, man? That's a beautiful message, isn't it? I was preaching and couldn't wait to hear it. Oh, let me say, I was putting it together and couldn't wait to hear it. Because, you know, we putting something together, you never know how it's going to come out, man. He's like, hey, oh, man, can't wait to hear this. Hmm? I knew we was going to get them. We'll see what benefit it brings. You know, sometimes, some, you, know, you ever seen a... Uh, I had two brothers, and all three of us had different personalities. Me, I was the good one. I never gave, I'm telling the truth, I never gave my mother and father any trouble. Can you bear witness? And the mother too, they were nothing but trouble. But the one in the middle, gave less trouble than the younger one. They never had to come and bail me out of jail. They never had to worry about me going out doing some stupid stuff. They ain't never had to worry about me going out there messing with folks and then folks would want to go do a drive-by by my mom's house and damn near just kill mom down, bullet missed her by this much while she was at the sink washing dishes. That come from the, the young evil ass one. I had to drive back home again. I ain't going to give y'all my whole life history. But I had to drive back home again and try to find out who in the hell shot that damn bullet. Even though I knew it came because of that young evil one. My young brother. When I saw him, I said, I'm going to go ahead and just tell you the flat out truth. You are very, I used lucky back then because I wouldn't say you very lucky that bullet didn't hit mama because if it would have just even grazed the hair of her head, I'd have came back here and killed you. That's why I told my little brother. That's how I would have killed you. I would have killed you dead. Nothing but thorns. Wicked as hell. Three different personalities, three different people. Now when I say I'm good, I'm talking about I'm not, I'm not, I ain't got no cherry on top of my head now, okay? I'm just saying I never caused my parents any hardship, annoyances, and troubles. Never did. Never. Ever. They'll bear witness to that. You hear that? What about some of you? You know, some of you are annoying as hell. Oh, no, not me. Really. And all these annoyances is because you refuse to die out to your flesh. 
See, one of the secrets in Yah is, is you have to be humble. You can't say you humble. Your works would testify of you. Yah resists the proud, but he gives favor unto the humble. So all you people out there think the past dollar is all arrogant, egotistical, bolsterous, loud, all this old other superlatives you throw into me, then how is it that you don't have the favor of Yah? Because whatever way you see me, it's funny that y'all don't see me that way. See what I'm saying? Because they don't know me. Don't the book says know them that labor among you, among you, know them labor among you? So if you're not among us, why would you even, why would you even try to even audition for being a thorn? Do you ever see me out there talking about these Israelite camps? I'm talking about making personal attacks on them. Personal attacks against individuals. You know the reason why I don't do that? Because I don't care whether in pretense makes no difference to me as long as the name of Messiah is being mentioned it's better than his name not being mentioned is they can pull as many people out of Christianity <laughs> as they can all power to you. My hope is, is once they get you out, once y'all get out of Christianity, y'all get over in these camps, then all of a sudden you'll come across me one day. <laughs> See, I don't like going fishing in the swamps. <laughs> Did anybody understand that analogy? <laughs> I like that fresh water sweat fishing. Clear streams, you know. Like lakes, man, you know. <laughs> and that ain't no thorn coming either. It was an insult, but ain't no thorn coming. <laughs> Don't worry about it. most of them ain't got it anyway. You gotta be spiritual to get this anyway. <laughs> Read. Yahweh is good. Yahweh is what? It's good. I guarantee he is. Come on. A stronghold. Yes, he is. In the day of trouble. Come on. And he knoweth them that trust in him. He know. No, no, wait a minute. He is the one that know them that trust in him. He know the stage players. He know the hypocrites. He know you mouth professing people. Mouth like candy. Lips smoother than butter. You know you people who talk shit and you ain't about nothing? Y'all knows them that love him. Come on. But with an overrunning flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemies. What do you imagine against Yahweh? He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. Y'all hear this? Affliction is not going to rise up a second time. Listen, listen to the prophet, come on. For while they be folding together as thorns, and while they are drunken as drunkards, they shall be devoured as stubble fully dry. See, y'all got stubble planned for them, don't they? Come on. There is one come out of thee that imagines evil against Yah, a wicked counselor. Thus saith Yahweh, though they be quiet, and likewise many, yet thus shall they be cut down. When he shall pass through, though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. Y'all hear that? There was a time that Yah's afflict us. He ain't going to afflict us no more. He's going to clear us of all of this. Hallelujah. But this is to the ones that he know that love him. Ah, key point. Key point. Ah, remember the word of Paul that he said to the Romans, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Remember that Ren renewing of your So you can prove what is good and accept the perfect will of Yah, which is your reasonable service. Isn't that right? That's what, yes it is. And what mind is? The mind is Yah. To think like Yah. 
to see like Yah, to act like Yah, to please Yah, and not your own selfish self. Read. For now will I break his yoke from off thee, and will burst thy bonds in sunder. Isn't that beautiful? That's the promise of Yah through the prophets. All these that mean us evil and persecuted, y'all going to break their bonds. Every bit of them. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. Don't you despise the chastening of Yah and don't you be weary when you are corrected of him. See, our problem is that we don't ever equate that sometimes when we have these issues, you're being tested. Just to see if you'll pass this test. You're being tried. Just to see if you'll pass this trial. If you don't pass it, guess what? It's coming again. It'll be back around again and again and again and again and again. So, so much for the witchcraft and the manipulation. So much for trying to change environments through nefarious words. So much for trying to say your intent is this, but really your heart is full of darkness and evil. You're painting an oasis over here, but you really are in a jungle of hell. Y'all sees all that. Remember, he judges the thought and the intent of a man's heart. So, everybody, I hope y'all enjoyed that message, right? I'm going to tell you right now, ain't nobody mad but Satan. I don't give a damn either. Ain't nobody mad but him. Do you see how that if you don't start this, you'll never be able to bridge that little fine hairline between faith and belief? Because to purge yourself, you have to believe y'all. You have to trust in him. Again, belief is your offering to y'all. I can command the leg grow up, but I believed before I even commanded that the leg was going to grow up because I trust in him. You up there focusing on the leg. Leg move. Leg move. Leg move. Move leg. Move leg. It's kind of like a dog you try to tell him to sit a thousand times. He don't sit until you get a stick to him. Oh, never mind. Man. Jeez. Did y'all just miss that? What is also belief in Yah? Before you pray, forgive. That's your own belief. Oh, mercy. If you stand praying, if you remember that any have all against you, leave your gift at thee. That's belief. Believe is just more than just trying to conjure up. I believe. I believe. I believe. I, you can. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Okay, so when you gonna start doing it and stop saying it? One man said he believed, but he needed help. He needed help to trust Yah. He'd been so used to dealing with everything after the natural sin, it's hard for him to, to believe he could trust Yah. See, I just got finished saying, I already had believed Yah before I even laid hands on him to touch him. He that come to Messiah must first believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know how rewarding it is to know that you can tear down Satan's kingdom and Yah's using you to do it? 
That's rewarding. That is serious rewarding. Every time somebody gets delivered, man, man, ain't that rewarding? And guess what? Yah use you to do it. But all glory be to Yah. You know, we, you know, all of Israel basked in the glory of Yah. You know that, right? When he came down, he shining so bright. That means the light and the rays were hitting them. So guess what? They got a little bit of that glory themselves. Moses, he, he got so much glory of Yah, he looked at his ass and his face was shining so much the Israelites couldn't even behold him. That's glory. And most I even in all his mercy told Moses, I can't let you see me like this, not in this state. I'm about to pick you up and hide you over here in this cleft of the rock right here. And you can then when I pass by, you can look at my backside. That's good enough for you. Wouldn't that be the ultimate for a man? You're serving this, this, this eternal, the mighty one of Israel, the mighty one of the whole entire universe, and all you're asking to do is just to see him and even let you in your flesh, let you even just get a glimpse. Because every time you see him, he made an appearance and stuff, he came down in a cloud. Yeah, he veiled himself, had to. Had to, man, too sinful. We, we cannot behold him in this flesh like this. That's why he has to purge us. We have to be purged before we get out of here. Some man's sins go before them to judgment, and some man's sins come after. I want all mine going before. I want nothing coming after. All before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let me show you what's happening in this world and we're done, all right? Man, you've been some long messages. If y'all had opportunity, y'all been trying to go back and listen to them? My size, man, they've been immersing themselves in these messages. Every time I turn around, you can hear them. You go one place or another, they, they got them playing. They, they are really letting this word sink into them. That's what I mean, prompting or commanding me. They're just doing it on their own. Isn't that beautiful? Let me show you what's happening in this world. And I told you it was already coming. Look, woman marrying a dog. No, real stuff. Straight up. Didn't I tell you it was coming? I told you it was coming. That woman is literally marrying a dog. But not only that, look at this. This man married a dog and he's kissing the dog. And this booger right here is performing a ceremony. Look what the dog got on. A little white wedding dress. And this woman over here, look. I guess that must be a lesbian union. It's got a white dress on and she got the black on. It even it gets worse. Look at this. And the pictures of them down below. Told you it's a sick world. Wherefore come out of her my people. Now look at this. This is what they want all of the men to be today. This is the style that they're promoting. Look at this. See the reason why that we keep our children separate from these predators? Look, look at this. Preschool, drag queens. Remember I told y'all and, and I made this statement during the broadcast and stuff on Facebook the other day? Look, old woman teaching anal sex in elementary. Wherefore come out of her and my people and be ye separate, save the most high. Still an abomination is going to cause you to burn. Look at this 
sickness of this world. Look at the people of this world. They seem so intelligent yet so sick. Look at this one. They got married each other. They cutting their little wedding cake. Wherefore, well, come out of her, my people. One stroke of the pen over here. You tell me how in the hell the Supreme Court and set up there and make damn laws in the land when they're supposed to be there to interpret law. Oh, yeah. All across this land, they support gay marriage. But then they hate this. I know somebody is sick. So you must obey and come out. The world wants you to stay in so that it can prey upon your righteous seed. Coming out has to do with a complete change of mind and a renewed mind. Glory to the king. I like. I like showing pictures like that so I can see the disgusting look on our children's face. I like that. I love that. See, here we put a difference between the holy and the profane. Glory to the king. You should be disgusted at this mess. So obey your parents. So that your days may be long upon the land which Yahweh your Elohim give you. Hallelujah. Anyway, I hope that you learned something. I hope that you would actually, uh, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way that you could have heard everything that was said today in this one message. This thing has to be revisited again. It really truly does. You'll hear what the Spirit is saying, but we bless the Father. Let us stand. Y'all, it's good. So y'all know what the thorns in the flesh is now, huh? Messengers of Satan. Could be you. Glory to the King. Most high of Yah, we thank you for all things. We pray to say and sing deep down our hearts. In the magnificent name of Yahshua, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of our heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O Yah, my strength and my redeemer. Dismiss in beautiful name of Yahweh, Yahshua Mashiach, Shabbat Shalom, the King. It's coming. Look at him looking.